Hey Miami sports fans, stop by Canesware today at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, Florida. And check out their awesome merchandise selection of your favorite South Florida sports teams. From the Miami Dolphins, Hurricanes, Heat, Marlins, Florida Panthers, and Inter-Miami, they've got it all. Celebrate your favorite team and show off your fandom with their beautiful team starter jackets, killer looking helmets, team jerseys, cool shirts, and more. And if you're out of town or out of state, no worries. Go to canesware.com and find everything they have on their site. Select what you want and they will ship your gear to you. Anything over $99 is shipped for free. Don't wait. Stop at Canesware today. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Clock. I'm your host, Bobby Fitzsock, joined by Josh Wingate and Coach Vogel. Josh, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. I'm trying to figure out if there's a such thing as terrible fives because my daughter is going through it right now. <laughs> Holy cow. She needed a little daddy in her life tonight. Sure. Oh, I told man. her. So we're running a little late because I said, hey, my daughter needs to snuggle a little bit. Yeah. Going to do that. I she still had to brush her teeth. It took her this long to brush her teeth and still hasn't done it. Um, so now I'm here, haven't snuggled with her. So, <laughs> Oh, no worries, brother. We, we all deal with that. We all got that. Um, but anywho, uh, Coach, how's your week so far? It's great, man. It was great. I had a good weekend. It's beautiful weather here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So Yeah, it's beautiful here. Love and life, just trying to get. All this stuff done for the big draft next week, boys. Hey, Christmas yeah, we're is almost here. Two more weeks, and we're we're we'll be live talking about the draft, reacting to the news. Cowboys trading up for JJ McCarthy. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, you know, it's gonna be an exciting time. It'll be an exciting time. But there's a lot to talk about. Obviously, this is our mock draft special. We're finally gonna reveal our official round one mocks. And what's going to be great is as soon as we reveal it, something's going to happen. A trade's going to be made. It's going to mess it all up. It's going to break everything. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. We had to get it done. Hopefully next week. It has to be next week, but we will. Whether it's Monday or we do a special right before the draft, we're going to reveal our top 100 picks. We're going to get to work. We're going to get those done. I promise. But before we move on, uh, before we reveal or start our mock drafts. Now, I wanted to ask. I was going to ask before the show, but we were all running a little late. Uh but did we want to do our mock draft together before we revealed our mocks, or should we save that for the end? Whatever you, you think's best, I'm down for. Well, you're no help. I know. Let's <laughs> do the, uh, the mock at the end and, and show ours up front. Perfect. All right. Let me go ahead and pull this up here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see your message till right now. I just saw it on the messages. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So first things first, though, uh, let's get some news out of the way in regards of the Dolphins draft news. Uh, Dolphins uh, have, are going to meet with two top guys in the draft offensive linemen to the satisfaction of Coach Vogel, one being – Oregon center Jackson Powers Johnson. They took. They had a, a, a top, obviously a, a thirty visit. They're going to have some. They're going to have dinner with him. He's going to go to the facility. So really, rolling out that carpet. You got Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma, offensive tackle. They're meeting up with him as well. Barry Jackson has pointed out the Miami's met mainly with offensive players. They met with some defensive players, but mainly offensive players. Uh, I'll just say it like this. I want to get you guys' reaction. But my thing is. Even if they haven't met with a guy, does not mean they're not going to draft the guy. So I know some people are like, well, we need edge rushers. We need a safe – just because they haven't met with those guys, don't be surprised if a guy that you didn't hear Miami met with is the pick at 21. Uh, Coach, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is draft season, so they're going to – you know, teams are doing all kinds of stuff like this to, you know, oh, the Dolphins aren't interested in defense. A guy will be able to – 
you know, we'll be able to stay at 23 and be able to to get our guy, and then the Dolphins take who they, you know, the defensive guy they want. It, it's all posturing, man. It's all good. Absolutely. Uh, now, Josh, you asked a great question on Fitz Talk today, and I'm always thankful when you're watching, um, putting my feet to the fire, throwing questions at me. <laughs> um, but uh, and I, I, I'm, I had it written down, and my kids touched something, but you were, you asked a great question. I believe it was like, where's your stopping point on offensive linemen? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, what was your list? Because they met with Tyler Guyton, and I don't think he was on your list. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't think he was on my list either. I believe mine stopped at Mims. Mims or my um, Mims. I think that's correct. Because yeah, I, I remember I said mine stopped at Guyton, and you you stopped at Mims, yeah, if I, I believe so. I'm trying to pull up. What's um, up, Scotty Anthony in the house? Good to see so Cliff. I would say Joe Alt, um, Fuaga, uh, Fashanu. Yeah. I'm a little um, – Jordan Morgan is, is one of my guys. And then Friday. Amarius Mims. So I have five that I would take in the, in the first round. Absolutely. I like it. I like it. What do you, Coach? Who's your stopping point? Who was like – you know, if he was – if all these other guys were taken and this guy was left on the board, you're like, nah, I could wait. It would be a reach. Who's the stopping point for you? Um, I kind of agree with, with Josh. Like I – you know, I, I like – I think I like Morgan better than I do Guyton. Um, oh, I don't think I know. Like I, he, he just he was very fluid in the in the in the film that I saw. Um, it just, like his his feet were pretty man. It looked like he was dancing back there. And you look at, you know, some of these other guys. They look a little more labored and, you know, reaching for pass protection and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think I think the the three that Josh said, and then um, and then. Um, I lost his name, Josh. Who, Amarius Mims? Or... And Morgan, 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 Morgan. So sorry yeah. about that, yeah. guys. My son came around and banging on the door. He knows I'm doing a show, so my wife oh, jumped and ran crazy. to the door, and he was banging. And right. what happened was, and Coach, you might, I, Josh, I think you, you don't care. Maybe you do, uh, but real Ripley. Yeah, just, re just rel relinquish the title. So uh, my daughter is really. a diehard Ripley Judgment Day fan. So I saw kind of like the rumor. So I <laughs> yeah. he watch Raw tonight. So right now my son's like, it happened, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's why they're banging on the trying door. Trying to give daddy inside information. That's right. Let me see my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, I you know. It's going to be interesting because there are some guys, as uh, Scotty says, for him, guy, it might be a reach at 21, but there's a lot of guys uh, because of the needs of the offense of the of different teams and whatever that could come a little higher. Like, I, I think there will be a run on, in, on offensive line early on in the draft. Uh, that's going to force a lot of teams to either jump and get players that they could probably wait it on or so forth. Oh, yeah. If you so, need to, sorry. What that. was that? My my internet is crazy right now. I didn't get oh, that last. The, no, no, no. I was just saying in regards to the offensive line. I know you know Scotty had said, and he, you were bringing up Tyler Guyton that Tyler Guyton would be a reach at twenty one. But seeing, I believe that there could be in the mid where point at the draft a run on offensive line, which will force some teams to jump up and possibly have to go ahead and pull, uh, take some of those guys early, which might force a team to pick a guy that could they could have waited. At 32 or 30 or whatever um and i understand it brother if, if you have to you know no uh, no you're you're good i i think my i i obviously for me i it would be hard for me to take the guys i didn't mention in the first round but the other guys like they're obviously going to go in the first round there's people that get pushed up all the time uh, because they're going to get to a point at the end of this round that they're like well where's the drop off and i don't want to be at the point where i'm not getting one of these top tier offensive tackles so that drop off is going to por force people to say okay um the value of getting maybe they're looking at a wide receiver or tight end or a t an offensive tackle and they're going to say well the drop off at offensive tackle is pretty close to second middle of the second round i want to make sure i get these top tier guys wide receiver falls a little further down and then the uh tight ends we can probably expand pretty far on that so they just want to be a part of the top tier guys before the drop off with that offensive tackle 
Doesn't it feel like it's going to be a very offensive heavy first round? With yes. Four or five very, quarterbacks, very, four yes. or five wide receivers, five could be five or six offensive linemen. It's gonna be very interesting. Let me check something there. Um, let me make, let me check. See. Yeah, I just turned my volume up. Hopefully, that's a little better. Yeah, it, it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. We and let me just let me just and first off, I know a lot of guys who are watching right now, especially in our YouTube channel. They're familiar with the network. They're familiar with us, guys. As, as everybody has, we have families. Uh, we try to bring you out the best content, but. It's a laid back atmosphere. Sometimes kids act up, things happen. It's totally oh, natural. There's story. a kid acting up right yeah. now. <laughs> Josh, no concern with our daddies <laughs> first. We are daddies. Yes. First. That's right. So don't stress. If you have to uh, put your camera down for a second, we'll take care of that very quick and come back, you're absolutely okay. Don't worry about it. Um, but Scotty, Cliff, uh, you know, Anthony, we're going to reveal what our first round mocks look like. We're going to, you know, and of course, we know how it goes. We're going to say, oh, here's our first round mock draft. I feel really good about it. Tomorrow, <laughs> Dallas trades up to number one and it's all broken. You know, something's going to go down. And it's like, oh, damn it. Um, but uh, did you want to react to that, Josh? You turned no, your mic I mean, off. Oh, okay. No. I was going to say, look, I got Josh go, mic off. What did you say? It's like, my bad. Um, I mean, the only way that happens is if they trade Dak Prescott and Micah Parsons, probably. Micah Parsons, man. I. I don't know if he'll get moved this year, but I think it's getting there. Yeah. Um, let me see here very quick. Make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. I think we're good. All right. So let us go ahead and start us off and reveal our round one mock drafts. We'll start with the coach. Woohoo! So coach, I'm gonna pop up first off with so this is how it's gonna go, guys. Just to let you all know. So we all worked on our round one mock draft. That means from pick one to for the Chicago Bears to pick 32 for Kansas City, we all made our predictions. After that round one, we use that that that, that mock draft to go ahead and move further to decide what the Dolphins did the remaining of the draft. So not gonna spoil nothing, but let's say if one of our guys or me or whomever made a trade. Then that trade would be, you know, we would go ahead and mock the Dolphins draft with that trade and whatever picks they were able to get. If Miami stayed put, they stayed put, and we just followed through with that. So let's go ahead and start with the coach. Pop his up there. Bam, right there. All right. Uh, number one, as most people do, Caleb Williams, number one to the Chicago Bears. Uh, I really like Jaden Daniels to Washington. He's, he's probably my top quarterback. And then with a surprising trade with the the uh, Patriots, the uh, Denver Broncos trade with the New England Patriots. Patriots get round one pick twelve and round three pick seventy six, and Denver selects. Ooh, I jumped on the wrong screen there. Uh, Denver selects Drake May, and then the Cardinals stay put and draft my receiver on the board, Malik Neighbors. Uh, the Vikings trade up with the Chargers and select J.J. McCarthy at quarterback. The Giants are grateful to have Marvin Harrison Jr. fall into their lap. Titans yep. get Joe Walt. Uh, Dallas Turner, the edge from Alabama to the Falcons. Um, Chicago Bears stay put at nine and get a stud, Jared Ver Um, And I think 10, I've looked all around, and it just seems like uh, tight end is the position that Jets want, and I don't think there's any way Brock Bowers gets tied to the Jets. Uh, the Chargers, with their first pick, get uh, Roma Dunze, wide receiver out of Washington, and then the Patriots get a nice stud offensive tackle in Fashanu, uh, Talise Fuaga to the Raiders. Um, unfortunately, the Saints take Liatu, um, and then the Colts take my favorite cornerback, Ke Kenyon Mitchell out of Toledo. Uh, number 14, Fatano, uh, stays in Washington to play for the Seahawks. Um, the cornerback, Teron Arnold, to the Jaguars at 17. Brian Thomas Jr., 18, to the Bengals. Uh, Chop Robinson, number 19, to the Rams. Number 20, J.C. Latham, uh, offensive tackle to the Steelers. And then the Panthers moved up in the first round, uh, Traded with the Dolphins. The Dolphins get round two pick 33, round two pick 
and round four, pick 101. So that was three um, almost top 100 picks uh, at the same time there. So we made that trade. Uh, they chose Lad McConkey. Um, Philadelphia takes Cooper DeJean. Uh, Vikings take Byron Murphy, too. Dallas went with Amarius Mims. And this is where uh, Josh is going to tell me that uh, Cowboys don't select tackles in the first round. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the the Packers, I had in a tackle and got chewed out by uh, our favorite Packer insider, so I gave him something nice and refreshing to drink with Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite edge, Chris Braswell to the Buccaneers. Nate Wiggins, corner to the Cardinals. Adane Mitchell, wide receiver to the Bills. Johnny Newton, uh, just felt like a Lions pick there. Tyler Guyton, uh, offensive tackle to the uh freeze up there huh i thought that was me i thought my internet was going out yeah okay so so we'll wait for the <laughs> pop back so baltimore uh tyler guyton out of oklahoma we were just talking about him goes to baltimore jordan morgan which is a favorite of josh wingates goes yep. to the san francisco 49ers and the uh kansas city Chiefs super bowl champions we all know they need receivers and they go receiver here xavier worthy uh, again, if you, I know it broke up there for coach in regards of the trade Miami made. I believe the trade was pick 33, 39, and 101. So Miami got two uh, second round picks uh, from Carolina. So that would give them three in his mock draft, uh, which is 33, 39, and 55. We'll give him a minute to pop back in. But before we do, Josh, if you uh, can, just want to react to his mock, which you see. Uh, something that's surprising or something that you or something that you like that maybe you didn't think of um so I, I i think it's surprising that the panthers the first time i was like oh wow um the panthers move up for lad mcconkey um i think that was a little shocking uh they move up with miami obviously uh so that's the the first thing that caught my eye that i was a little shocked by um other than that i think everything's kind of straightforward um don't see anything out of the realm of of what could actually happen um yeah that line mcconkey moving up instead of like taking an xavier worthy or one of the other top guys there you go coach is back <laughs> he, he got nervous he said i can't do this anymore and he ditched us um uh, hilarious no worries, brother. No worries. We were just – I finished it up. Tyler Guyton to Baltimore. Niners yeah. take Jordan Morgan. Xavier Worthy. Uh, so, Josh was just touching on the trade-up for the Panthers coming up for Lad McConkey. Dolphins making a trade, getting 33-39, uh, and obviously 101, which is, a, you know, very good in my opinion. You get two good uh, early second-round picks. That gives Miami yeah. three value picks there with – uh, 33, 39, 55. Explain that trade, why you made that for Miami, and then why did Carolina trade all the way up to 21 for Lad McConkie? Um, I felt they are in need of wide receiver. Um, the phone was ringing, and I just felt like there were still a lot of our guys on the board that um, that we have rated high. That could be, you know, uh, middle of the first round back type guys that are, that were still available. And there was a lot of, um, um, Scotty, the thing is with the, the mock draft I did, it, it would say like, whether it was a fair trade or not a fair trade. So when it said fair trade, it just made it. Um, I agree. There should probably be more, more picks in there, but I felt there was still a lot of quality picks, uh, that we could, that dolphins could, could score with, with those, with that draft, uh, with that switch switch. Well, that's why I went ahead and, and made the trade. So I want to look at something very quick. Um, I want to see if I have it pulled up. So that's 21. You know, I always – the way I do my mop, I don't think it's a bad haul, actually. Um, and some teams overpay. It depends on how desperate uh, Carolina would be to want to trade up for Lad McConkey and how uh, – Un, not desperate Miami would be to say, okay, just give us that and let us move on. Because if you go yeah. back and look at even someone like a team trading up from 12 to, or, you know, or five to one or yeah. whatever, you know, sometimes yeah. it's a major hole where it's like, holy crap, right. they got, they got the farm. Then there's other ones where they, 
you give up just an extra pick. Yeah, no, I, I do think I do think in the world you'd probably get more back than that, but that's what we got, so we went with it. Yeah, so going off the NFL NFL trade value chart, which is something I use, I go when my mocks I go based off um, and I, I uh, trade. Uh, uh, I mean draft rumors, team needs, and then obviously when I do work on a trade, I try to stick with. Uh, what I think a team might do. I, you know, as I've talked to coach yesterday of how I do it. Um, yeah. But anyway, 800 points would be Miami's 21 pick. You can go to 33. And that is worth based off their assessment. And this was, I think popular, uh, maybe Wingate could correct me. I think this was made popular by Jimmy Johnson. Yep. Yeah, the trade value chart. Yeah. Yes. So pick 33 is valued at 580. So you subtract that, and then you got 220 left. You got 39 valued at 510. And then, of course, 101, which is 96 points. So, yeah, no, uh, according to the trade chart, um, that is – a very good haul. You're actually uh, negative in those points by that time. So um, not that bad, not that bad a deal. Hey, well, that's true, Scotty. It's a great point by Scotty here. The gives value to that fifth year option. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, since coach dropped out uh, and we kind of talked a little bit over, we're going to go ahead and move on to what he thinks Miami does with those draft picks that he got from Carolina and how the rest of the draft plays out. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Here comes the coach's mock. So Break it down. With, with the first pick in the second round, we went interior offense lineman Graham Barton out of Duke. Um, I just feel like the Dolphins want somebody who is uh, is flexible along the offensive line and he can play all three positions. 39, um, I think this is a Finns Talk Sports Network favorite, Brandon Fisk, uh, for the interior defensive line. At pick 55, uh, maybe a little bit too high, but Xavier Leggett, I agree with Josh. I think he could be special in um, in Mike McDaniel's offense. We went with uh, Edge Brandon Dorless out of Oregon in the f- uh, fourth round. Um, Luke McCaffrey, fifth round. Uh, sixth round tight end Jaheim Bell, who is still available from Florida State, which I think is a steal. Um, and then DB Chow Smith Wade from Washington State, and then uh, the last pick we have, I went uh, linebacker JT Bertrand from Notre Dame. I had to get your Notre Dame guy in there. I had, I had to do it. Let's see here. Make sure uh, here's the thing: doesn't make I'm, doesn't I'm, mean he's going to make the team, but I'm not going to tear tear your draft apart. But Graham Barton is not making it to the second round at all. Like I'd be shocked if he falls out of the top twenty. I agree with you, but he just happens to. I don't know how <laughs> yeah, that happens. That's crazy. So uh let me see here. Anthony, your question. Did you guys only do yes? We did Ooh. one full round one mock. Okay. And then we just went ahead and uh now for me personally, I did I went into the second round and did pick by pick by pick by pick to kind of see how everything would kind of fall, at least based, again, on draft needs, yeah. rumors, uh, tr- trades, uh, you know, who's still available, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we only focused on round one and then did the rest of the Dolphins. Um, yeah. w- why is Barton my least favorite? He, that Scotty's been on that. I, you know, I, has- I don't know. He's super intelligent. Like, this is what everyone is saying of why, like, from my understanding in the draft community, Graham Barton is jumping above JPJ in mm-hmm. the scout's eye and team's eyes just because of his overall intelligence of the position, um, football knowledge. Um, he's athletic. He's uh, He can play all five positions. He, like NFL teams are falling in love with Graham Barton. One pick I did like a lot, a lot, was the Luke McCaffrey pick. And I'm yeah. becoming more. Um, I know you're high on him, so. Yeah, I've become more comfortable with the idea of him, Miami making a move on him, just because of what he could do in this offense with these guys. Uh, 
That's high praise there. Uh, interesting. Very high, interesting. High praise. Very interesting. You got two, uh, two the two ends here. One that's not too sure, or doesn't like them yeah. that much. One obviously going to win Hall of hey, Famer. Uh, no, listen, I love. First of all, what stood out to me with Barton right away, and I've said this, and Scotty knows this, and he knows he's probably exactly what I would say is the flexibility, the versatility, yeah. playing all three positions. I mean, guard, tackle, center. I mean, especially with a line like Miami, where you're going in and out on injuries. Uh, you know, and, but then again intelligence wingate just said that you know uh motor velocity uh again i could see him now again i know there's some we were talking about jackson powers with medical concerns but the same yeah. thing be said for graham barton it depends Sorry. on really how the draft is going to play out where these guys may fall uh let me clarify i'm talking about the play style i'm not saying he's pretending okay it's okay you don't have to clarify no we got you brother i'm thinking we go safety a lot higher than fans are expecting um there's a lot of good safeties in this draft. Uh, I'm not saying the draft is deep or it's going to be like, oh, my God. But there are a lot of quality players kind of hiding throughout the draft that you could get a good safety or possibly an undrafted free agent. Um, Jaden Hicks is a guy. I know we've talked about uh, Bullock out of Central – I mean, excuse me, uh, South uh, Southern California. Um, a guy I recently started watching, and I'm like, whoa – I, and I'm, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but Jay uh, Stanley, um, out of uh, Southern Miss, I believe it's Southern Miss, six two, big guy, but big production. Um, there's a lot of quality guys. Um, I don't think Bart, Barton will really uh, be an OTN to be versus guard center. Only in my opinion. Every, well, yeah. All of it's my opinion. Everybody's it's everybody's opinion, and that's yeah, why I mean, it's not wrong. It's not wrong or right. We all have our fine. opinions. It's fine if. Yeah, he could be a guard center only, but he has the flexibility to play um, emergency offensive tackle if you need him to, and that that's really what yeah. it is. Um, Zach Martin for the Cowboys, he's a guard. But at the same time, we ran out of tackles on our offensive line, so he slid out and he played right tackle a couple snaps. Uh, we needed it, so he has that flexibility to do that. It's always valuable to have people with that flex because if you do get in those emergency situations, what are you going to do? Absolutely fair. Coach, you did not pick Zach Frazier. What the hell's up with that? Was he gone? Well, no, he wasn't. And that was the thing. Graham it Barton was there. it was it was Graham Barton, JPJ, and Frazier were all three there. Ooh. And the reason I went with Barton is because he can he he can play all all positions. He he is, you know, that's the only reason. You know, just make it offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. Give me a couple centers and a, and and a guy who can play all three positions, and we'll just make it a brand new offensive line. Uh, let me, Duke. First off, Duke, great to see you, brother. Fins up, my man. Is Jatavion Sanders a possible option for the Fins? Yes. Um, Dolphins with the Texas. A lot of people were 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 saying, "Oh, Xavier Worthy, Xavier Worthy," because they got some nice pictures. But the rumor is is that the Dolphins were there to see two players, Tavondre Sweat. Jatavion Sanders. Dolphins did sign Janu Smith. They got Durham Smythe. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to draft a Jatavion Sanders maybe in the set, late in that 55 range or later. Uh, so, yes, I think it is an option. That's, again, my opinion. I've been saying trade out of the first round. Hey, if you could get a – again, if you could get pick 33 and 39 and 101, if Miami could do that, I, I would love that. I would – I. There's so much value in that second round, third round, fourth round that you it, it doesn't hurt. Now, of course, if you're sitting there and one of those top guys are there, whether it's offensive line or 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 like who's a player, a realistic player, and of course anybody from the top five could fall it all happens all the time. But who's a realistic player that could be at if they fell at 21 that you would not trade out of that pick? Joe Alt. But he ain't gonna fall very far. I said realistic. I mean, oh, I know. I, I said um, realistic. Now I'm, I'm gonna have a smart answer here. Okay. Um, Graham Barton. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think he's gonna fall out of the first round. Either. Yeah. If Graham Barton's there, you guys gotta take him. All right. So let. Okay. He says we gotta take him. So now, what I like about Wingate, his wife's a Dolphins fan, but he's a Cowboys fan, and he kind of gives an un. Biased opinion. So what we're going to do first, obviously, we're going to reveal his round one mock draft. 
We're going to see how the NF how the draft play plays out. What's left for the Dolphins at 21? Is there another trade down? Or does he stay put? After that, we'll see how the rest of the draft plays out for Miami. So, Wingate, take it away, brother. Sure. So, um, I went with the obvious. I have Caleb Williams going number one to Chicago with Jaden Daniels with Washington. I really think that's how it's going to play out. Um, the Patriots stay stand. I, I think they're trying to – see the value i don't think the value is going to be there to where they want it i think jj is going to um meet their needs um of what they want so jj mccarthy goes three um i agree with coach malik neighbors is going to be that first wide receiver off the board i think there's a lot going on with the wide receiver position or with marvin harrison rather um, because a lot of people are looking at him and he's not doing a lot of the things he's Che- unchecking a lot of boxes right now um, where Malik Neighbors is just checking boxes. Uh, Minnesota Vikings then go Drake May. They trade up and that trade is um, they give up the 11th and the 23rd overall pick to move up to 5. Um, so that means the Chargers got um, the 11th and 23rd overall pick and they take their quarterback Drake May. They're in desperate need of a quarterback. Um, the New York Giants then go with Marvin Harrison which stinks to have him in my division. But um, he doesn't have a quarterback there, too. Um, and then with the seventh <laughs> overall pick, uh, the Tennessee Titans go Joe Walt. Um, I have the Falcons going Jared Verse. Jared Verse, I feel like, just fits what they want to do. He, I think he might be one of the top edge rushers in this draft. A lot of people are saying Dallas Turner. I think Jared Verse could be the first one off the board. With Chicago following up with Leatu Latu um, with Chicago. Um, I have the Jets. Instead of going offensive line, I have them going Roma Dunze. And then mm. after that, um, the Chargers go to Lise Fuaga, who would be a perfect pairing um, in L.A. And then I also have uh, Denver taking Bo Nix, uh, one of my top guys. Uh, 13, Keon Mitchell uh, going to the Raiders. And then I have uh, one of the big trades in this of the Chargers trading up with New Orleans. Um, I forget what that trade was, um, but they did move up and gave up some big value. I think it was um, they gave up their first and their 2025 second round pick to move up um, that many spots. Uh, Then I have Brian Thomas going to, because Brock Bowers went right before uh, Indianapolis, uh, they decide to uh, build up the receiver room, and Brian Thomas goes to Indianapolis. Uh, Troy Fontanu, they really need in Seattle, they really need integer help, and Troy Fontanu is going to be that help that they need. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Terry on Arnold um, out of Alabama, the second cornerback off the board. And Fashanu, um, we all know I'm a little lower on him, but I have him going to uh, the Cincinnati Bengals um, to help out on that right side. Um, to protect their quarterback. And then the Rams decide to go with Dallas Turner. Uh, They need defense help, uh, offensive line specifically, because they lost one of their biggest pieces along the offensive line. Um, So just trying to rebuild that offensive line. And then with the Steelers, uh, we have Graham Barton going um, there to play center. They they desperately need center help, and I, I think this could be a big... Um, this really could happen on draft day if he doesn't go earlier in the draft. Um, at 21, the trades that I was getting just didn't fit um, what Chop Robinson could do for this team. Um, so I decided to stay pat. Uh, so Chop Robinson ends up going to uh, the Dolphins at 21 with Nate Wiggins following that. Amarius uh, Mims going to the Saints. And then as well, I if I'm Dallas, I would rather trade back. Um, but the trade value wasn't there. So I decided to go um, Jackson Powers Johnson here. There's a lot of injury concerns with him. Dallas brought him in um, for a 30 visit. Um, So hopefully the injury concerns aren't there. I would not be shocked at this point if Jackson Powers Johnson falls out of the first round, even though the talent is there. The injury concerns are there as well, so that could affect him. Then at 25, I went Cooper DeJean. Um, I did this because what player in this draft seems more like a Green Bay Packer than Cooper DeJean. Yep. Um, he, he just seems like he should be wearing the G on the side of his helmet. Uh, Tampa Bay needs to rebuild out their wide receiver room. 
Um, they're getting old. A lot of guys are injured. So Adani Mitchell um, is the guy that I, I decided that there are concerns around him and, and Sweat in Texas being big partiers, um, immature. So, again, he could fall out, but the talent is there. So if he does go in the first round, I could see him going there. And then with Arizona, uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, they, they could have gone – uh, or actually, I had them going wide receiver early. I was going to say they could have gone wide receiver. Here. No, I had them go wide receiver um, with the fourth overall, getting, in my opinion, the best receiver in this draft. And then they pair it with one of the best cornerbacks in this draft, so starting the draft out really well. Uh, Buffalo is well known to need to rebuild the receiver room. Xavier Worthy, um, speed guy. They lost the speed guy, so moving him into there. Uh, Byron Murphy, he's a hair on fire rusher um he fits everything that you want um in detroit and what they're trying to build there in detroit so he would be a perfect uh, person to come and build that defense up because they have defensive issues while that was the secondary um the rush can help the secondary so they're trying to build off of that uh baltimore i had tyler guyton going here um, they lost some help along the offensive line they traded their right tackle they're trying to get younger they lost their left guard um so Tyler Guyton is the guy that replaces that. And then the Steelers get J.C. Latham, um, right tackle guard um, to fit wherever they need him to be uh, to solidify that offensive line. And then Lad McConkey, wide receiver. I just feel it in my bones that Lad McConkey is going to be a chief. Um, and mm. I think it's just going to be a dangerous pairing. I'll tell you, too, uh, Lad McConkey, uh, coach had Xavier Worthy there which makes sense speed you know that uh uh andy reed loves speed but again one of the biggest issues with the receivers of the chiefs last year was dropping balls and you probably want to get one of the best ball catchers in the draft and that to me is Lyde mcconkey it makes a lot of sense for him to be that pick uh and again uh chop robinson uh and again i want to spoil it but you know for I did like two or three of these, and I'm again. I was doing one by one by one by one, and and you know, and again, he was the the, the edge rusher that was there, and I was like, man, it just makes it. again yeah. with chop. When you look at when if you're just looking at the numbers, you're going, ah, dude, ain't that. But once you watch him on tape, I mean, the skill jumps up. The production's not there, but you could see the talent. And I mean, if you put him behind uh, uh, Jalen Phillips and and Bradley yeah. Chubb for a season. Imagine the damage he could do and possibly learn from those guys. But also, you know, Jalen Phillips needs to come out for a couple series. You put in Chop Robinson. I mean, holy crap. Uh, year one, if you just put him in pass rushing situations, I can't tell you a guy in this draft who has a quicker win rate um, at pass rushing because Chop Robinson is quick at beating his defender. Um, I don't know what happens. I think players get the or quarterbacks get the ball out quick. Because Penn State has some dangerous pass rushers over there. Um, one of the guys is from around my hometown. Um, but they they have dangerous pass rushers. Chop Robinson is quick. He has a quick first step. And he beats his guy. Like, you have to rewatch it. Because you look at it and it's like, did the guy not try? Because that's <laughs> how quick Chop Robinson beats his guy. He's quick. He's fast. The issue with him. He does not set the edge, so that's something that you're going to have to work yeah. with him. His his run stopping is not there, but for what you can get in a pass rusher, um, could beat out what you're losing at at the run game with him, because again, you're you're going to be running the four three or the three four, and there's going to be other defenders that can help him in that process. Absolutely. So there you go. So uh, again, I mean. Uh, I think there's three times a charm on one, but I, I moved a little bit. But anyway, uh, Scotty says Chop is a Weaver guy, in my opinion. He would be able to mold him easily. Uh, Phillips and Chubb looked solid walking to the facility today. They did. And I was able to meet Jalen Phillips, um, nice guy, great guy, and he looked healthy to me. I mean, obviously, he's he's getting there, not there yet. Uh, but, I mean, I am. I, when people were saying he's not, oh, he's not going to be available for the start of the year, I don't believe that one bit. I, those guys look good. They're working hard. They know what they had last year, and they're trying to get back to that so they could have a solid season next year as well. Uh, all right. So, again, no trade for the Dolphins on Wingate's uh, mock draft. So let's see how it plays out for the rest of the Dolphins and 
uh, in the draft, according to Wingate. Booyah, there it is. There we go. Uh, you're not going to see many trades here because I think the value to the trade value was just so much greater of what you could have got. Um, Chop Robinson at 21. Christian Mahogany at 55. I feel like he's going to be a plug-and-play guy for you. He can keep um, the guy you, you got from Tennessee. You can't think of his name. He can stay at center. Um, and it helps fill out your offensive line a little better. And then at 158, Justin Abogby. Um, he can be, I think he's someone that could potentially play the nose at some point, but also be a DN. He could be like a flex guy for you. He's big enough, 6'5". I think he's uh, 315 maybe. Um, so he's got the size. And then Eric All, tight end. I believe he was someone that got brought in for a 30 visit um, through you guys. And I saw him, the other tight ends on the board just weren't, weren't good enough. Um, and then I have Joe Milton the third as a quarterback that you could develop. Um, Joe Milton's going to walk in and everyone's going to be like, oh my goodness, I've never seen arm strength like this before. Um, that, that was a knock on Tua, by the way. Um, and then at 241, uh, Rasheen Ali, we talked about him last week. He is another guy that got brought in for a 30 visit. I think he could be a special teams guy. Um, potentially develop into something. Uh, the interesting thing is I, I want to see what kind of return value he has because I know he's a speedster, um, and a lot of teams are talking about having two return guys rather than one with the new um, special the new teams. Rules, yeah. 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 Yep. There you go. Uh, let me just answer this very quick. Uh, Duke Tomlinson, any chance Penix is drafted by the Raiders at pick 13, or is that too high? No, I don't think that's too high. I don't think you should sleep on Penix going that high at all. Um, that would be great news for the Dolphins. Yeah. Um, it's the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, again, it's, it's the Raiders. Raiders. We know how high they are in Jaden Daniels. Don't sleep on Raiders possibly moving up either. Uh, but um, they could easily sit. I think Penix can go as high as 13 or he could go as low as early second round. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and same thing goes for Bo Nix. Bo Nix. Look at that pick with the Denver Broncos. You know, uh, you know, do they take him early? Is it too early? Do they say, hey, let's see if we can mind a move back? I anything could happen. Yeah. Um, it'd be crazy if six quarterbacks go in the top 15. It would be crazy, but not impossible. All right. Let's go. And first of all, I just have to ask because Wingate didn't react. I didn't show it to Wingate earlier. I did show it to Coach. Uh Josh, what'd you think of your uh, your 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 uh, caricature? You like it? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I loved that it. Cool, man? it was yeah, great. very yeah. cool. Is that I you drawing that those out there, Bobby? It's me working some stuff out with my my graphics and all that whatnot. <laughs> That's impressive, yeah. man. I was like, damn, yeah. that actually looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was funny. I was like, hey, send me a picture. Of good. Yeah, I was like, send me a picture close, and you sent me one real far away. So I just zoom in. I was like, got it. All right, I'll use that one. <laughs> but it worked. It worked. <laughs> It looks really good. Look at that handsome beast. Yeah. You, know? you, I, you know, I almost, what I did, because um, I, I, I didn't get the chance to ask Josh, and I almost, and I was like, and then, you know, I didn't see it on his Twitter, so I almost just found a picture of, like, Ryan Fitzpatrick and work off that. But now I, was like, you, now I was like, you know what? I, that's right. I, wait, I, I'm friends with him on Facebook. On I, Facebook I was like, look, yep. and I found a picture, and I'm like, got it, you know? So yeah. it worked out fine. All right. Beautiful. Now, let's go on now. I will apologize ahead of time. I, my mock draft – Round one looks a little different because I got I had mine done a little earlier this week and I had a little bit of time to work through like an actual thing. Um, so it doesn't look exactly like theirs, but I'll read it out. Um, I don't want nobody – it's favoritism. It's not, I promise. It would all have been all the same, but got some a little late. But anyway, here we go. Uh, bam. So here's mine. Uh, no shocker. Chicago Bears go Caleb Williams, number one. They get their franchise quarterback. Jaden Daniels goes number two to the Washington Commanders. New England Patriots draft J.J. McCarthy. Supposedly, Elliot Wolf, uh, it, it, who's in charge of their football operation now, loves J.J. McCarthy. Uh, four quarterbacks go in the, in the first four picks. Minnesota trades up to Arizona's pick. They send 11-23 and a first-rounder next year to move up to get their QB of the future, Drake May. Uh the Chicago Bears shock the NFL world. There's a the rumors that they are wanting to trade up to target Marvin Harrison, and they do so here. They trade up with the Los Angeles Chargers. They send nine seventy the ninth pick, the seventy fifth pick, and a first round and move up. Take Marvin Harrison. They traded Keenan Allen, 
Mike Williams is now gone. They get Marvin Harrison to pair with Justin Herbert. The Giants get the next best thing, possibly the better thing, Malik Neighbors, receiver out of LSU. Titans, of course, go Joe Olt. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Arizona trades, I believe they trade up. Yes, they trade up after trading down. Trade up to the eighth pick after Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors is off the board, and they go. They trade with Atlanta, sending Atlanta 11-35 to go get Rome Adunze, receiver out of Washington. Followed by another trade, the New Orleans Saints trade up to nine with the Chargers, and they go get Fashanu out of Penn State to shore up their offensive line. The Jets go get Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. The Falcons, after moving around, they get Dallas Turner, edge rusher out of Alabama. The Cowboys kind of see the run going. They trade up and trade <laughs> J.C. Latham. Offensive tackle out of Alabama. The Raiders to like uh, Talise Fuga, offensive tackle out of Oregon State. Chargers, after moving down, get Brian Thomas, wide receiver out of LSU. Excuse me, and as Bears trade up to give a, for, for Caleb Williams, not the Chargers. I said that earlier. The Colts get Kenyon Mitchell, corner out of Toledo. Because they got to go and face the Houston Texans, who got stronger and drafted Stephon or s traded for Stephon Diggs. Seahawks go get Troy Fotanu, offensive lineman out of Washington. Jaguars pick another corner, Terry and Arnold, second corner off the board. Bengals get defensive lineman Byron Murphy out of Texas to shore up that D line. The Rams lost uh, their uh, uh, Donald, Aaron Donald, defensive uh, tackle. Uh, so they look to get some pass rush help. They could go D-line here, but I got him going Javard Verse at LS, uh, UCLA. He could fall, though. Uh, excuse me. I'm Jared Verse out of FSU. Yeah. Say what? Yeah, uh, I meant yeah, uh, out of FSU. FSU. Uh, yeah. Steelers take offensive lineman Amaris Mims. Again, the draft in this mock draft for me, there's a run in offensive lineman. Baltimore, and you guys both had Baltimore taking Tyler Gotten at 30. They decide to move up. And take Tyler Guyton with the 21st overall pick, give, sending Miami 30, 93, and 113 uh, to move up to select uh, Tyler Guyton, offensive lineman. The Eagles take Nate Wiggins, corner out of Clemson. Johnny Newton goes to the Arizona Cardinals. The Denver Broncos trade and get the, uh, after trading back, they get Bo Nix at 24. The Packers get Cooper DeJean because I agree with Wingate. They need, first off, they need secondary help. Uh, I was going back and forth on the offensive line as well, but they need that secondary help. He, they need help at safety. They need help at corner. He plays both. They go ahead and get the Cooper DeJean. Buccaneers, uh, I love what Wingate was saying with the receiver. It's absolutely true. They're getting up there, Mike Evans. Um, but I have them going edge rusher here, Liatu Latu. The Cardinals then go get corner, Kool Aid McKenstry. Buffalo Bills. Lost to Fon Diggs. People are laughing. Josh Allen doesn't have a receiver. We'll see how he does without Diggs. Well, they made sure they get a good one out of Lad McConkey, wide receiver out of Georgia. Lions get Chop Robinson, edge rush out of Penn State. The Dolphins, after trading back to 30, select Jackson Powers Johnson, interior offensive lineman out of Oregon. Now we're concerned about the medical concerns. They did sign Aaron Brewer, Tennessee center, uh, to play their, to be their starting center. Great thing about Jackson Powers, they lost Robert Hunt. Powers played right guard in in Oregon for a number of starts. So that's a place where he could start for Miami, and he will do so in his first season. The 49ers take Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle out of Arizona. And Kansas City, Lad McConkey for Wingate. Xavier Worthy for coach. I got Adani Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas. And that is my round one mock draft. Okay. React, fellas. What, question for you with Rashid Rice issues and then um, the issues being talked about with Adani Mitchell and uh, Devondre Sweat, do you think it's feasible that if Adani Mitchell is there that they could just pass on him in Kansas oh. City? Oh, I think it's feasible for sure. Uh, yeah. My thing was now if Lad McConkey was still available on the board, that would have been the pick. Absolutely. Um my my thing was is that Adani Mitchell I think has better hands. Now I didn't really take it to 
account what's going on with I know what's going on with Sweat. I wasn't I'm not sure what's going on with Donnie Mitchell, but I know Donnie Mitchell has better hands in my opinion than Worthy. Uh and he, he he's an easy guy. Again, he could go late in the first, go early in the second. I had him going here because I don't know if there's anyone I would take over a Donnie Mitchell at this point for wide receiver with the Chiefs pick. And then if Dallas decides to take J.C. Latham over to Lisi Fuaga, I'm smashed. <laughs> I have three screens in front of me. They're all getting smashed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of love on J.C. Latham. I'm hearing he yeah. could be taken within the top ten. Uh, again, I under I get you know again everyone's opinion, yeah. but I'm hearing a lot of love. And again, with uh, with their need, uh, obviously, and you know better than I do. Tyron Smith retires um, or is gone, leaves. I mean, yeah. he goes with the Jets. Uh, they're going to need help on that O line. They move up, and again, J.C. Latham. I, I think Latham's more of like a right tackle, offensive guard. Where Fuaga, I think he can play left tackle. Um, yeah. I think Dallas really needs a left tackle. There you go. Hey, I'm gonna trust. You. I trust you, brother. I know you're a yeah. Cowboys fan. You know your stuff. And Wait, uh, I mean, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna hate on anything because I know how hard these mock drafts are to do. And someone to come yeah. in and just be like, "What are you thinking with this pick?" And you're like, "Oh shit!" No, no. <laughs> I just spent so much time on this thing. No, I no, I did, I did, and like I yeah, said, I mean, exactly. I, but but um, let me ask you this. Because I think you had Bo Nix to the Broncos at 12. I had them trading yes. down and taking him at 24. Could, it, could Is that realistic to you? I think it's very realistic. It's just depending on – I I had that same thought process when I was doing this. And then I thought, um, how comfortable am I to trading back or just going ahead and taking my guy? Because – and did you, did, I, did you lose me there? I still got you. I hear you. Okay, um, how like if I'm sitting there, how likely is it that I'm going to lose my guy trading back? Um, I'd rather just take my guy there, and that's why I did that. Where, where uh, were they originally at, Josh? Um, Broncos was it like is it fifteen something like that? I forget where they're at. <laughs> well, you, well let, uh, wait it out, brother. Wait it out. Uh, uh, so you traded back, yeah? I think I think Bo Nitz will be there at twenty four. Yeah, I don't. He, I don't, he very well could be, but my thought was, am I gonna? He he's at they're at twelve. Sorry. Yeah. No, I I, I like I like I said I, I have that Detroit Lions uh, GM philosophy. You take who you want, where you pick, and and yep. and don't worry about anybody else. Let me just say something very quick. Uh, Daniel, good to see you, brother. You say OBG wants uh, – Odell Beckham wants $15 million. I haven't seen that. If you could put that on there so I could take a look at that. I haven't heard $15 million. I know the Dolphins have made uh, at least two offers to him. Um, let me see. And I, Duke says, I prefer a taller wide receiver three than OBJ. I would too. I think all of us would prefer a taller receiver um, – than what Miami has. However, uh, on Fitz Talk today on Saturday, we discussed uh, some of Chris Greer's traits, and he prefers, and he usually goes after 5'10", uh, 5'11 receivers around that average. Um, Bobby, you're killing me. Leggett is the pick at 30. Well, let me ask you this. Coach, Dolphins trade down. In a poss- uh, if they, this was to go down, 21, they trade down to 30. Um, what would you think, though, if Miami took Jackson Powers at, uh, at, at any point in the draft – but let's say at thirty here, what would you think of the value? I'm I'm good with it. I think he's I think he's a stud stud center. You know the one thing I do question a little bit is the injury history, but the dude's a I mean, he's a baller. 100%. He's a he's a stud baller. I think Leggett is is uh, you're going to be able to get him in the second round. So if Me you too, can yeah. trade back, if you if you can trade back like you thirty and get some some of that draft capital in the second round. I think he's, you know, I think he's definitely somebody we can pick up in the second or third round, if 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 he's still there. So, I, the thing that I thought was interesting is is the three of us kind of had the same mindset on certain teams and who we felt they were going to pick, and then yeah. there's others where it was just like, <laughs> nope, not even close. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and run through my Miami Dolphins mock. So the yeah. Dolphins again tr- traded down; they got um, thirty. 93, 113, uh, and of course we know that they took with the 30th pick Jackson Powers Johnson, who will 
possibly start at right guard before moving to center eventually. And here you go. So at pick 30, they took Jackson Powers. Why the hell not? We, we know the medical concerns, but we know how good this guy is. On the very first episode of OTC on the clock, all three of us were pounded the table for Jackson Powers, Josh Wingate leading the charge, uh, yeah. Jason Kelsey 2.0, hopefully. Uh, again, the Miami would be lucky, I believe, to get him at 30. I think Zach Frazier is a huge possibility. Um, Graham Barton as well. Again, I think edge rusher is the is where they're leaning, but in this mock, they traded out of that spot, and there was no edge rusher worth that pick. Uh, 255, second round, 55th pick. Braden Fisk. You know how much I love this guy. If he's the pick at 30 or 21, I'm not hating. I'm absolutely loving. Uh, I just saw someone talk about defensive line, finding a defensive tackle who doesn't fail at the, after the first pushback, blah, blah, blah. This guy is the guy. Motor is off the charts. Look, you know, the tape is off the charts. Combine was off the charts. His favorite player is Zach Sealer. Pair him with Zach Sealer. Help heal the broken heart of Zach Sealer losing Christian Wilkins and get him his fanboy and Braden Fisk and let them tear up offensive lines for years to come. Wide receiver, Ricky Purcell out of Florida, 6'1, 190. I love his size. I just said that Chris Greer prefers 5'10, 5'11 receivers. We need a taller receiver. This guy has reliable hands. It's not the fastest, but you don't need that. You could put him right in the slot. He could be your third guy right away, day one, and possibly your number two if Tyreek has to move on or you can't resign Waddle. Um, and he's he, pairing him up right there, put him in that uh, returner spot right away, either at punt and kick returner. Uh, I love the potential of Ricky Parcell. I hope he's there sitting at 62. He was for my mock, and uh, I think it was too hard to pass up on him at that spot. Uh, Taron Armstead is coming back. For how long, we don't know. We don't know how long he's going to play in the season. Uh, I think he's averaging eight games. Uh, we did bring back Kendall Lamb. I love it. I think that's a solid signing. He was one of the MVPs last year and when the times he started. But you got to prepare for the future. And I have Miami taking Matt Goncalves out of Pittsburgh, 6'6", 327. Again, uh, with the, in the fourth round, he's a solid death piece who could eventually maybe replace Armstead later on. Good athlete and solid in pass protection. Gabriel Murphy, UCLA uh, edge rusher. A lot of rumors going around that Dolphins are targeting an edge rusher with that first pick, and I believe them. But again, the way the draft played out, my, the way my board played out, they went Jackson Powers, and they get a, possibly a steal here with Gabriel Murphy. Uh, you know, Again, I was watching Liatu, and there's a lot to like about Latu out of UCLA. But Gabriel Murphy caught my eye a lot. I think this would be a solid pickup. A lot, you know, PFF, I think, yeah, or PFN, mock draft, has him as a seventh-round prospect. That's criminal. Uh, I think this would be a great pick at round, at, at round five, a solid piece sitting behind Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, uh, and, of course, uh, Shaq Lawson. Running back in the sixth round, pick 184, they get Isaac Garando out of Louisville. I'm probably butchering that name. If Evan was watching, he could fix it. Uh, correct me, but let me tell you what I like about him. Uh, patient runner has good size, decent speed, reliable pass catcher. Uh, again, that screams Mike McDaniel. Uh, I don't think this would be like, I'm forgetting the guy coach who we took last year late in the draft that was good in the preseason and everybody's kind of hoping and praying. Hayes was it Hayes, oh. the kid out of Michigan? The I don't know if it was Hayes. No, no, no. I'm talking about the running back. The running back we took. Oh, oh, my fault. My fault. My fault. I'm trying to remember um, his name. Was it it wasn't Brooks, was it? Brooks, Chris Brooks. Yes, sir. Thank you. So Chris Brooks. Uh this wouldn't be like that. I don't think you know, Chris Brooks got drafted late and wasn't used in the in the during the season just a little bit. I think this guy could have early playing time in that rotation. And one of I think coach and my favorite, Dalen Hulker, one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. Tight end Colorado State. Not much of a blocker. I know everybody's going to ask, can he block? He can't block, blah, blah. But as a pass catcher, he's a weapon. I think he could compete possibly with Derm Smythe. Uh, Derm Smythe, obviously, better blocker. But I think he could compete for that uh, tight end two spot 
or possibly tight end three. They tried last year to get a third tight end. Didn't work out. They ended up cutting the guy. They get a solid one here. You could possibly you could put him in the slot as well. Now, so I forgot who was talking about safeties earlier. And again, like I was saying, there's some sneaky good safeties in this draft. Okay? And I think Jay, Jay Stanley is one of those guys out of Western Michigan. 6'2", 215. Love his size. Love his production. Uh, let's see here. I think he could be a steal late in the draft. But last year alone, let's talk about that. 61 total tackles, three forced fumbles, three interceptions, five pass deflections. The year before that, again, 61 total tackles, three forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, five interceptions, seven pass deflections, and then two interceptions a year after that. So Jay Stanley, I think, would be a solid pickup. The Dolphins brought in uh, – Jordan Poyer, they got Javon Holland, but even after bringing back po or signing Poyer, they still wanted to bring back Sean Elliott. They fought and they lost Brandon Jones. They bring in Jay Stanley here, and I think this guy could be that late round steal that the Dolphins usually find with those uh, hidden gems. There you go. I Ricky. at fifty five. I was between Christian Mahogany and Ricky Purcell, and I was like, whoa, Ricky Purcell at in the slot and this offense could be very dangerous because he's a deep threat. He's a big deep threat. He and he's got a really good catch radius. And I was like, do you know what? The need of guard outweighs what we could do at wide receiver. So that's why I went with Christian Mahogany, but Ricky Purcell is who you you I, nailed it. I hear he's climbing about. too. Yes, he is. I've heard that as well. He crushed the combine, like absolutely crushed it. After the combine, I was looking for some guys. His numbers were outstanding, and I, I threw his, his tape on. And if you play off on him, um, or if you play main or like bump and run, he he's gonna beat you. Uh, like he's gonna beat you deep. I think he had an average, and I could be thinking of another player, but I think he had an average of thirty yards um, per catch. He, he's there you he's go. a stud, yeah. All right, that looks good, Bobby. I like it. Oh, there you go. Uh, um, yeah, man. I again, yeah. Uh, you know, again, uh, Ricky Parcell. Uh, you know, I was look, trying to look for that third receiver. I was thinking, you know, the way the negotiations go with OBJ could happen, could not happen. I went with us that they didn't bring him in, so they go in and get a good player there. Aaron Ricky Parcel, who could pot start day one, at least in that rotation. And we'll go ahead and run through. We all get a pick. I think I had it. Vogel would pick one, Wingate pick two, pick three, and then we'll rotate and we go there. All right. Let's see here. Oops, sorry, guys. What the hell did I press? I don't know. Thanks, Scotty. Appreciate you, brother. Scotty yeah, says it, all th three mocks are great. Duke agrees. That's awesome, man. And there's other guys Scared. out there in free agency. Michael Gallup's still a free agent. Yeah. Hunter Renfro is a free agent. So it doesn't have to be OBJ. Sorry, there's my other thing's guys acting up there. on me here, guys. Oh, absolutely. All right. Forgive me, guys. My computer's acting up on me. Hopefully, you can see the. Yep, we, we so we're it. using the PFN. Perfect. We're using the PFN mock draft simulator, and this is different. We're not doing just dolphins. We're not going to do seven rounds of dolphins. We're just going to do round one, uh, and we'll no make trades. we'll do as quick as possible. But we will no trades. Quick as possible here. All right. right. Go. You start it off. All right. Well, I think everybody knows where I'm going. Well, Coach what Rose. I would be doing. Sure. Am I there? Am I here? Can you hear me? Yep, Can you hear yep, me? I got you. All right. All right. Well, if it were me, I would, wouldn't be picking Caleb Williams, but I think the Bears are going <laughs> to. So, uh, Bears quarterback Caleb Williams out of USC. Cool. Uh, uh, right. I'm going to go. I mean, the easy, go. easy one after this is going to be Jaden Daniels. I think Washington has been locked in on him. 
um, for a while. I'll be shocked if it's not that pick. So Washington goes Jaden Daniels. Give them a punter. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, that's I'm gonna screw it all, but I'm gonna try. Patriots to will take a punter. I was seriously was gonna go. I was like, F them. Anyway, uh, I think I think I think we all agree on how the top three picks are gonna go. I'm going JJ McCarthy here. It's a Patriots pick. It's a safe pick. Um, we yeah. and you know again, it could be smoke, but sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, Elliot Wolf <laughs> likes JJ McCarthy. He wants him to be the pick. He goes with that. Arizona at pick four. Uh, there we go. Wide receiver out of LSU, Malik Neighbors. Mm. Yeah. There you go. That's right. Chargers, Wingate. Now you're making it hard on me because I can't trade back. Um, I am right. going to go here, and I'm going to go Joe Walt off the Ooh. tackle Notre Dame. <laughs> Whoa, our first surprise. Okay. Nice. All right. Joe, oh, and right. the Giants are like celebrating. They're going nuts, and they're saying we're going Marvin Harrison with that pick. All right, um, Joe Alt's right, well, off the board, Coach. What are the Titans going to do? Um, I think they will go um, wide receiver. Give me the wide receivers again. I can't remember who all my guys are. Who's the next oh, one? Oh, uh, Roma Dunze. Dunze. Yeah, a dun a, a dunze. A dunze. All right. Uh Titans uh, go wide receiver dude, room Rome a dunze. Falcons. You know what I would love I would love to do here is pair Brock Bowers with uh I can't think of his name right now. Kyle Pitts. Just, Kyle, know, Pitts. Kyle, Kyle Pitts. Pitts and have the two greatest tight ends I've ever watched on film um play with each other. Um, but wow. figuratively, okay. <laughs> um, but whew, this is a tough one. But I, I'm I'm gonna have to go in and stick with what I had before. Um, and go Jared Verf here. Yeah. All right, Jared Verf goes to the Falcons. Uh, you got the Bears. And top Bears. All three top wide receivers are gone. Uh, so I'm going to – the Bears. I'm going to go Dallas Turner here. Coach, Jets. Yeah, I think the – I still think the Jets are going to go Brock Bowers if he's there. Hmm. Let's make it easy. We'll go Brock Bowers here. All yeah. right, the Vikings. The Vikings need a quarterback, so we're going to go Drake May here. Uh, it's an easy Ooh, pick for Drake. them. Drake May has fallen right into their laps. Uh, damn, it's hard to. Yeah. I'm going to go quarterback here. I'm going to go Bo Nix. Bonix goes to the Broncos. Coach, Raiders. The Raiders are going to do Raiders things, and they're going to go quarterback, Michael Ooh. Penix Jr. Wow. It just feels like the, something the Raiders would do. Michael Penix? Yeah. You said Michael Penix? Yes. Okay. Yes. C. Doing Raiders okay. things. Sorry, you guys are on a delay there for me. Oh, no, there good. you go. There you go. All right, Wingate. I think there's a guy that is going to go top, potentially top 10 on this board right now. Um, and I think that's Talisi Fuaga. So I'm going to go Talisi Fuaga here. Um, they have a guy that's, I think one of their tackles is out for a while. Um, so Fuaga is going to fit that need. There you go. All right. Colts. So he's still available. Obviously. I'm going to go that route. Yep. Brian Thomas Jr., LSU, going to the Indianapolis Colts. Give Anthony Richardson a weapon. They will uh, appreciate coach, Seahawks. <laughs> um, I think the Seahawks are going to stay in, in-house or in the same state and go Troy Fatanu, offensive tackle, Washington, more like interior offensive line. Troy Fatanu. Yeah. There you go. 
Um, and then Jaguars, they desperately need Jackson. Like they need they need wide receiver help, but I don't think you're going to get that right now um, with the value. Um, but they also need a corner, and Kenyon Mitchell is still there. Um, so I'm going to go Kenyon Mitchell. Yes, I like him. All right, corner. I like him. This Stroll stupid boy. thing. I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> All right. There you go. Cincinnati. Oh, Lord. All right. Wow. So here, I had Byron Murphy going in my mock to Cincinnati, but you got to go best player available. Yeah. They could go O line. I'm going to go with Fashanu out of Penn State. Great. Coach, Rams. Um, Rams. They need, I think they're going to go with an, uh, they're going to go edge and go with Liatu Latu out of UCLA. There you go. To strengthen up that defense a little bit. Ooh. Now this is where it gets tough for me. Because right. I, I know I would love to see Josh. Graham Barton here, but I also know that – do they need corner help? I'm trying to think of what their needs are uh, with the Steelers. As oh, offensive, offensive tackle, 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 offensive center, uh, quarterback, yeah. wide receiver, center, safety. Corner. Oh, is that what it's showing up there? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think – it's between Graham Barton and Terry on Ar- Arnold for me. Um, and I think the value of Arnold is just too great. Um, so I'm going to go Arnold here. There you go. All yeah. right. I like, it. I like it. Ooh. All right. I did not do that on purpose, by the way. I did not. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I did not do it on purpose, I swear. Um, all right. So the Miami Dolphins. My goodness. What value is on this board right now? Uh, yeah. Offense, defense. Mm. Special teams. Special teams. Yeah. You know, so I forgot who wrote it in there the, uh, and what they wrote in the comments, but it's true to what Chris Greer says because it's hard for me to – It's I'm really leaning towards offensive line, but famously the line is we're more worried about the offensive line than they are. Yeah. And so I'm going to go with that mindset. And I'm going to go Chop Robinson out of Penn State. Nice. Chop Robinson out of Penn it State. Is. Why? Well, again, Jalen Phillips is going into his fifth year. Bradley Chubb could be in and out the door. You need to be, be, be uh, prepared for that. I'm going to go Chop Robinson. You could get a quality – the way the draft's falling, you probably get a quality guy on some line and, and pick 55. Compared to an edge yeah, rusher. the way right? this draft is falling. That, that there is a uh... – Yeah. The way the board is going, that edge the edge watcher quality is going to drop off by pick fifty five. So get your guy now. If this could happen in real life, like, whew, give me this offensive line when Dallas is coming up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm loving it. Well, my thing is, is uh, it doesn't say that they need the Eagles need help at center, but didn't theirs just retire? They have a guy back there uh, that they're projected to start. Oh well, again, if they're I'm, I'm trying to more worried about right them, there, then yeah. Um, let's go with Cam Jurgens. Cam Jurgens is the oh, guy. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's go cornerback Nate Wiggins to the Eagles. There you go. Mm. So the Minnesota Vikings are throwing their pen across the room because they're so mad that every quarterback has gone off the board already. Um, (laughs) With that being said, um, I believe offensive line has been an issue for them for quite some time, even though they've been trying to constantly build it back up, constantly build it back up. Um, But still, and as they added, ooh, they add, they added Andrew Van Ginkle to their to their team. They did. Um, the Ginks. and right now, the only starter they have at quarterback is Sam Darnold. So what we're going to do is we're going to protect Sam Darnold at all costs, and we are going to take J. C. Latham I here. I like it. I like it. Offensive tackle, Alabama. I like it. So. 
Let me call bullshit for a second. What? You're protecting a pick. You want Mims for the Cowboys. No, not at all. Um, Are you sure? I think because of J.C. Latham's um, flex at guard, okay. um, Brian Anderson, Ed Ingram, they, they have Blake Brandle playing left guard for them right now. You're not getting Mims to play. Okay. Um, Mims has got to play tackle and tackle. He can't go inside. Yeah. Um, I could have went. I could have went Graham Barton, but I do think Graham Barton is going to be a, a center in this league, and they have Garrett, Garrett Bradbury there. So that's why I thought you were going was Graham Barton. Yeah, I very well could have, but I, I wanted that more. Um, Ed o, Brian O'Neill is their right tackle. Um, I know he hasn't played well, so they need someone potentially tackle. And if he can't, if they don't need the tackle, let's move him in the guard. That flex. I, I stay true. All right. I got you, brother. Hey, all good. So, <laughs> all right. So, this is Tyler Guyton right here for the Cowboys. I'm just playing. Um, no, yeah. I am good. <laughs> I'm going with Mims. I'm going Mims here. He's top tackle on the board. They need a tackle. Uh, Smith is now in the Jets. Uh, I'm going, I got to go that. But would you hate that move or would you like it? No, I think, well, first of all, Josh, Josh never drafts Georgia, so. Um, but I would love it. I think um, they need to find a left tackle so they can keep um, Smith, Tyler Smith, at guard because he's one of the best guards in the league. Um, if they don't, if they're not able to find that left tackle, they're going to have to push Tyler Smith out to left tackle. Um, so yeah, I, I like the move a lot. All right, Packers. Um, I think we, you two have said it before, and I kind of agree with you now. I think Cooper DeJean. Dejean look would look good in that Green Bay, Green Bay Packer helmet. So we'll go, go with the safety. Oh, this is me again, isn't it? Yeah. Holy cow! I draft so quick. Um, I don't see Graham Barton falling this far. Um, I'm going to go Graham Barton here. Mm. Um, they they got an in, injury ridden center. Um, Graham Barton's going to go here. There you go. So Arizona, they got their receiver. Uh, they get their defensive line help here. They go Byron Murphy. Ooh, out of Texas, Coach. I thought you, I thought you were going to go with Johnny Newton. I like the surprise there. Um, let us see. I think the Buffalo Bills will go with wide receiver Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. Or maybe no. Okay. Oh boy. Um, there's a lot of guys on in this on the board right now that I could very well go. I'm trying to find Detroit guys. Just and you're gonna be so oh we're not doing two rounds, so I am actually gonna make a shocker pick here and go Braden Fisk. Defensive lineman. Florida State. You know, be, that is so right, Detroit, right. and I'll tell you why. It is. It is. It is so Detroit, and I'll tell you why, because, well, Coach, you know this, but last last season, Wingate, a lot of the guys that they drafted were guys I wanted Miami to take last year. Yeah. So I could totally see this happening. So I can't be mad. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little upset. It was probably because I thought – I was like, oh, he's doing this because I made a joke about Mims earlier, and – no, 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 I but, think Braden Fisk right. would bite cool, kneecaps cool. if if you asked him to do it. <laughs> All it's right, fun so seeing, it's fun seeing Bobby. Go ahead the, and the <laughs> I know I hate this. I hate it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go Tyler Guyton here. They need offensive line help. Tyler Guyton. Coach, you got the Niners, sir. Um, they need. Let's see. Offensive tackle, corner, D tackle, guard, and edge. Yeah, we'll go Johnny Newton. Defensive tackle to make up for the stud they lost. And to round it out, Kansas City. 
Johnny Newton. Yeah, I think the Kansas City, uh, there's one guy everyone is looking at right now, and he's out of Texas, Xavier Worthy. I think it's the fun pick, but I... Yeah. All I, right, I, 32, go Wingate. <laughs> I'm going to go Xavier Worthy, but I feel like it's not going to be that. I feel it's going to be someone else. I like think that's Scott just the, the fun pick for yeah. for us right now. Yeah. Because everyone wants to replace that um, Tyreek Hill in yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. I could see Keon Coleman being the pick as well. Yeah, I can too. All right. Bobby right now is like, he's hearing me say all this stuff. He, <laughs> I want to like follow up with, oh, I didn't mean to go Xavier Worthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, once you said Xavier Worthy, I was gone. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh man, I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell is happening here. Um, I think too. I don't know if it's because I sharing the window that everything was going slower all of a sudden. That's why I exited out, out real see, quick. Yeah, I apologize, but um, yeah. So to run it down, I mean, let's. <laughs> Uh, I th- who said it earlier, like five quarterbacks or six quarterbacks going in the top 15? That's the way it went here. Caleb Williams, J.D. Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, all one through three. Bo Nix and Michael Penix, Broncos and Raiders. Uh, my goodness. Johnny Newton going to San Francisco. Braden Fisk going to Detroit. And you know who's still available? Jackson Powers. Yep. Uh, Frazier. Zach Frazier. There's a lot of very there's a lot of good players still available after that round one mock. So but, question. Yeah. If you are sitting there day two with Jackson Powers Johnson and Zach Frazier on the board, are you moving a twenty twenty five pick to move up and try and get one of them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh depends on you know, I would let I would see how the, the first pick goes. Kind of let Chop the, Robinson. Couple. That's what we what you did, Chop Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and I would see like how 33, 34, 35s, you know, if if one of those guys go within those top picks, that's where I'm start making phone calls yeah. to see how, you know, if I got to move up now to get one of those hey, two guys. who are you guys taking? Yeah, yeah that's right. It's like, hey. Uh, none right. of your business. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, who do you want? None of your business. <laughs> it's like, just take the pick. But uh, anywho, so much fun. Uh, we yeah. are two weeks away from the NFL draft, and I've been enjoying every minute yeah. of this show. Yeah. And I'm That's already cool. looking forward to next season's show and how we can improve and how we get better. I know the guys are. Uh, it's not done yet. I mean, we still got like you know we got a few up, we got a few episodes left because we got to react and do all that. But uh, stick with us next week Monday. Uh, we should unveil our top 100. Yes, uh, we're gonna bust our butts to try to get to that. I hope, um, but I want to reveal that um, we got some work to do. Uh, but we're gonna do that, and we are working on scheduling our NFL live draft coverage show. So you know, while you guys are watching the draft on TV, plug in your laptops or your computers and throw us on and react with us. Right. You know, right. uh, we'll have the the uh, link dropped so you guys can come and react to the Dolphins pick at 21 or 30 or wherever it may be. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have all three days of the draft um, covered uh, like we did the last, the past few seasons, couple seasons now. Uh, so a lot to do, a lot to talk about. I guarantee by the time we end this show, a big trade's going to go down. It's going to break everything for us. And As soon as we hang up, it's going to – And I'll send – and, and if you guys want to get reminded of what picks we made, I will drop – the our Miami Dolphins mock drafts on FTSN's Twitter, so you guys can see, like, and share. Um, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. We appreciate you on behalf of Coach Josh, myself. Like, subscribe. Most importantly, Dolphin fans, fins up. Come appreciate boy. you guys. Appreciate- It's the Finns Talk Sports Network, FTSN, talking major sports and even wrestling. Bobby Finns Talk and his FTSN crew, they're taking deep dives just to entertain you. Talking Dolphins, he's...